both Chairman Powell and many of the uh, um, uh, significant uh, banking personnel and economists say we're not in a recession. The American economy is struggling. Inflation is skyrocketing. And the gross domestic product, the total amount of goods and services produced by Americans, has been in decline for the last six months. People are hurting, struggling to make their dollars stretch as far as they used to. Many are working second jobs, wanting just to get back to where they were before the government locked down the economy over two years ago. It's obvious to anyone trying to put food on their family's table what's actually going on. But politicians who fear accountability are in full-blown Orwellian denial. Substantial job losses, businesses shutting down, private sector activities slowing considerably, family budgets under immense strain, a broad-based weakening of our economy. That is not what we're seeing right now. In late July, the Biden White House launched a campaign to stop the bad headlines even before they started. While some maintain that two consecutive quarters of falling real GDP constitute a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. So began their orchestrated attempt to deny reality, with President Biden and other White House officials quickly echoing the administration's blog post. Unfortunately for them, pretty much everyone agrees that a two-quarter contraction is the formal definition of a recession. In fact, this dictionary I have right here defines a recession precisely that way. So did Wikipedia, until a flurry of activist editors quickly changed the site's article overnight to reflect the demands of their political masters. Facebook, ever quick to fall in line, then started labeling claims that the U.S. had entered a recession as false information, threatening to ban users who persist in making the claim. An agreed-upon definition of recession gives economists a common yardstick when discussing the health of the economy. Two quarters of negative growth has been that standard for a really long time. While they may have saved the second quarter from a technical definition of recession, the fact is we are now uh, 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 into the third quarter and we need, uh, we need to have another stimulus package. It also happens to be a definition often used in federal statutes, typically in various counter-recessionary measures triggered during an economic recession. It's almost become cliche to point out again and again what George Orwell might say about politicians demanding that you deny reality. But when it comes to the state of the economy, you're absolutely being told to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. We all know that politicians will try to spin bad economic news to dodge voter accountability. That's always been true. In the modern dystopia that passes for fact-checking, it is also true that big tech and the media have the Biden administration's back. But simply refusing to say the word, recession, is a bit like the euphemistic he who must not be named in the Harry Potter series. It ain't stopping Voldemort from destroying the world. In reality, the structural damage done to the American economy by the unprecedented government interventions of the past several years grossly understates the technical definition of recession. Government lockdowns, workers deemed non-essential, broken supply chains, trillions of dollars spent that we just don't have, and then the insane expansion of the money supply to finance it, these policies have left the engine of economic prosperity sputtering for fuel. A few of us warned against these government actions in March of 2020, not because we were particularly smart, but because it didn't take a rocket scientist to know how these bad policies would play out. The Biden administration is not solely responsible for all of this political and economic malfeasance. Lockdowns, after all, started under the Trump administration, cheered on by Dr. Anthony Fauci. Congress, controlled by Democrats but aided and abetted by Republicans, gleefully joined in the feeding frenzy of new spending. But it is President Biden who has doubled down, all the while denying the inevitable economic consequences of his actions. Next up. The Inflation Reduction Act will add another $370 billion 
and clean energy tax credits in reconciliation. The Inflation Reduction Act, a simple rebranding of massive government spending legislation that failed to pass earlier. Classic doublespeak, this legislation will not reduce the inflation that is stealing the wealth of hardworking Americans. It will only double the economic pain. Passing the CHIPS bill is going to put another $72 billion for incentives and tax credits to expand semiconductor production. They need to stop it. Stop playing word games. Stop holding press gaggles, pretending we don't have a serious problem. Stop doing more of the same, hoping for a different outcome. Stop micromanaging and let the American people rebuild. Stop the new spending exploding the national debt and stop printing funny money that destroys the value of the income we earn. The economy needs time to heal from years of government abuse. Pretending otherwise only tells the people who are suffering the consequences of your irresponsible actions that you don't know what you're doing or that you simply don't give a damn. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. Thank you very much. So, Mr. President, Mr. President, how confident are you that we're not heading towards a good recession? 